Hey there, my name is Anthony and welcome to Vibe with Velo. Today we're going to be going over database hooks. Database hooks are a very useful feature for essentially doing additional things to your data both before it reaches your database and after it's been written to your database. And to get into the specifics or kind of the reason for why we will want to do this is when you think about your database, you can generally enforce a few very basic things. You can uh, enforce what the columns are. You can enforce the types of them, whether they're an integer, a string, or some other piece of data. And that's about it. Uh, when it comes you when it comes to actually saying more things about what that data is, you can't do that just within the the database preferences itself. What you'll need to do is use hooks in order to further validate that data. What I mean by that, to give you an example, is say you were trying to store a month in a database. You might want to store the numbers 1 through 12. You'll specify that in your database as an integer. But when you go to store your integers, you'll notice that you can pretty much store any integer. You can't restrict that range on integers to just 1 through 12. What you could do to overcome that is you could and implement a hook uh, that would essentially execute before that bit of data is written to your database. And then you can do some sort of check and say this integer needs to be 1 through 12. And if not, you can throw an error or you can correct it in some other way. There's a variety of things to do that. Uh, there's a variety of things you can do there. This is just, you know, obviously one example. And I'll actually go, go through a live example in a little bit. But I just wanted to talk first about the hooks at a high level. And then we'll get into a real life example where I, a while ago, actually implemented a tic-tac-toe game because I was told that you can't implement uh, games on Velo. That's still mostly true, but I was determined to try anyway. But before we get onto that, First, we need to talk about all the different types of hooks that we have available to us. So as always, you should head over to the Velo API reference. And if you scroll down to Wix-data and expand that, if you go down over here, you'll notice there's a category or a section called hooks. And the hooks basically are available for every operation you're going to do with your database. They, are, they come in essentially two, two variants. One is before something happens and the other is after. Uh, they, are, they cover count, get, insert, query, remove, and update. All of those, all of those options um, have both a before and after. There's also one additional one called on failure that is basically triggered anytime something goes wrong. So you can even Man it, you can even handle errors there using these types of hooks. So if we head over to one of them, let's say, because <coughs> I'll look at this one later too, this is a very common one uh, for the kind of thing I was talking about before, is before insert. So what we can see here, and it's really important too when you're looking to use hooks that you go and read the documentation because they will describe in very specific terms exactly when they execute, um, and exactly what they are expected to return. And that is important that you stick to that. Uh, you'll notice down here, I won't go into it at the moment, but it says exactly uh, what it expects to return. Okay, so let's get into that a little bit. Uh, before insert, for example, will run in multiple occasions. And it's really important here to go to the API docs and read this so that this way you know exactly when your hooks are being called because sometimes it might be a little non-obvious. Uh, so as with pretty much everything you're gonna use, but especially with hooks, you wanna go ahead and read the API docs before you start using them or you might find some interesting functionality that you didn't expect. Uh, so the first time the before insert hook runs is when the insert function is called. So your client side code We'll go ahead, run the insert function, and that will tell the back end to go ahead and insert a insert whatever row it was just asked to. The other thing that will happen though is before that insert happens, that data that was just passed to your back end will go to the before insert hook, and that hook will essentially 
allow you to manipulate that data before it gets inserted into your database. And that's and an important thing to keep in mind there too is that this all occurs on the back end. So whenever you're putting logic into these, you're essentially taking it away from the user, away from the front end code and making sure that when you're needing to ensure that your database has sanitized properly formatted data, it's only the backend code that will be able to uh, have the final say. And that's important because you don't want just any sort of data from out in the wild being inserted into your database most of the time. The other time before insert is called is when an action is performed on a data set that inserts a new item into the collection. So any action that will result in a new row going into the collection, same there. Basically a row's going in, it's getting called. This also happens in the content manager. You might, for example, think that, oh, if I use the content manager, no code's going to be called. And that illustrates my point of why you should go to the docs before you use these functions, because actually even inserting through the content manager will do it, even importing data uh, in a sandbox or live collection, as that last bullet point says, will do it. So that was just a little slightly long-winded, but it's important to you know keep track of these things. And as you'll notice here, there are a bunch of other uh, things as far as order of operations and when things are called and what's expected to be returned that are also covered in the API docs. So I can't stress this enough. Go read the API docs, it'll save you a lot of time. So that's essentially uh, what these things do. Now I kind of want to go over an example here. So we'll hop over to my TikTok, my tic-tac-toe page, not my TikTok page. I do not have a TikTok page. In my tic-tac-toe game, for example, what I want to do is I want to keep track of whose turn it is. Now on this screen uh, that you're seeing, and I have the other player on a separate screen that I that you can't see, um, I'm the O. And because I'm the O, I shouldn't be able to insert another row into the database by clicking like I just did here on these two boxes. But who should be able to insert it, and I'll do this on the other screen right now, is the person that I'm playing against, which just so happens to be myself this time. Uh, and that's, imp that's a bit of logic that cannot necessarily be encoded in the front end code. Because if I encoded it in the front end code, what would happen is a user could go ahead and just insert additional, additional entries for themselves, essentially cheat at the game, could even potentially insert entries for their opponent and cheat at the game that way, uh, solely because the database wouldn't be enforcing any of this. The database would say, this is a well-formed row, this matches the data types I expect, it fits the columns I expect, everything's filled out, it's good to go, even when it's not. So that's important there that it that this, this flow be kept correctly. And then even on the win condition, so for example, if I go ahead and win this game on the other screen, what'll happen is the, the result will be determined and this will also be stored in the database. Uh, and this logic too, who won the game? Who won the game is something that needs to be handled in the back end, and I could probably handle it in different ways in the back end. But since I was doing a lot of other validation logic here, I decided to go ahead and do it in my database hooks. So now let's see how that works. So if we come over to the hooks, uh, I've, I've actually written. It's always good to to break out code into multiple functions. So what I've done here is I've implemented two hooks. And I've done that by, if we come over to, sorry, one sec. Oh wait, no, I'm, I'm on the right screen. Over here, I have added a, a hook that basically says, uh, you know, before the update, we're going to go ahead and run manage game. And before insert, we're also gonna manage game. So what manage game will do, if we come up here, is it will check a bunch of things on the state of the game board. In particular, at one point, it's going to call check errors. 
And so these are, this is code that before every update and every insert is going to be executed. And what check errors will do, will go ahead and make sure that nobody's cheating at the game. So like I said before, you don't want your user to play out of turn. Uh, and so here we can actually go ahead and enforce that using, using the hooks. Whereas if we didn't have hooks, we wouldn't be able to enforce any of this about, about the data. What we would potentially do is in the front end, we would put this logic, but that front end logic is malleable, right? N there's nothing in the client's web browser that says they need to execute exactly this code every time before they do an insert to the database. They could, for example, be a programmer and know enough about it to get around it. And obviously with tic-tac-toe, this isn't a very serious example, but you can see where for much more crucial data where this is important to be handling this on the back end and particularly to be handling this before it gets into your database. Then some other things too, for example, when we won, when we won the game, we had to go ahead and check that. And so if I come over here, what we can see is I've actually hard coded all the potential uh, wins that can happen with within this game. These are basically arrays and the logic here, just trust me on it, works out to this is the logic for who's won a game. And so we can, every time you know a database update comes in and it's well formed because we're checking it for errors, we'll go ahead and check it for potential wins. And if there's a win, we can return that result. And if there's a draw, this is actually very poor logic for checking a draw in, in a tic-tac-toe game, but ignore it for now. We can go ahead and do that ourselves. So uh, we can take those results and go ahead and store those in the database. And then from there, our client code can go ahead and read the result from the database. So again, nobody can uh, put in the wrong data into our database. And yeah, that's basically hooks. Uh, I'll actually put a link on the screen for where you can go ahead and check it out within the API reference. Uh, but if you want to just navigate yourself, go to wix.com slash velo slash reference, navigate over to wix dash data and head down to the hook section. It's really, really powerful stuff and really, really, really useful. So that's all this time. Thank you for listening to me and I'll see you again at the next five with Velo. All right, bye.